our last use case is uh, a work more by Mona, and Mona, I think I will uh, share, let you share your screen uh, to, to do your presentation. So uh, Mona is new to, to uh, as a contributor to, to the HUED software. So a lot of our work, our work currently will lead to things that are very interesting uh, to this group, but we're not able to share all the code and resources right now. So those are things coming largely um, because it will lead to greater interoperability. Um, okay, so just to be sure, uh, greater interoperability and hopefully a much better uh, quality of surface extraction eventually. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, today I will talk about uh, 3D surface extraction benchmarking and analysis project that we, are, uh, we have started working in our team. This frame is publicly available and can be used as a reference map as a reference map uh, to create 3D atlases of a small anatomical structures of human brain for detailed observation. These 3D atlases can be mapped as uh, shown uh, to other spaces and uh, be employed as uh, templates uh, for in vivo MRI analysis. For visualization, registration, and analysis, uh, it is often required to extract 3D surfaces from 2D discrete label maps, uh, which mark anatomical structures in the data. Extracting surface data from such a uh, ultra high resolution data set uh, is not trivial and uh, not widely tested yet. So uh, the aim of this project is to develop a benchmarking tool uh, to evaluate uh, the 3D surface extraction algorithms from 2D discrete label maps. It will allow uh, intra uh, probability of common visualization and annotation tools used around big brains, such as A3D, Display, Brainbox, uh, ULIF tool, uh, and others. Uh, it also facilitates collaborations between research teams. This benchmarking tool also provides the ability to compare the performance of different uh, algorithms for uh, 3D mesh uh, ex extraction and it will help uh, to improve the accuracy and scalability of uh, each method. This tool uh, can be employed for different surface and mesh types and different resolution and sizes of volume can, uh, will be considered. So the first step is to uh, define a data set um, of uh, 3D uh, triangular meshes and uh, uh, we have selected both anatomical and geometrical um, model uh, for this purpose, and we try to consider various ge uh, geometric features such as uh, concave and convex uh, uh, curvatures, also textured and smooth surfaces are uh, included. Uh, here you can see two of the examples uh, of the uh, 3D models that uh, we are going to use as a reference. 2D label maps uh, of these uh, reference 3D uh, models uh, uh, should be extracted using uh, a 3D uh, uh, for different resolutions and different uh, spaces between sections. And then uh, the 2D label maps will go uh, through the surface extraction uh, method uh, to reconstruct the uh, to reconstruct the uh, 3D model. Here you can see an example from the reference model and the uh, reconstructed 3D model. I want to show you how um, I have done this specific uh, example uh, in A3D. First, I open uh, the big pane, and then in workspace, I uh, open uh, one of uh, my geometrical uh, reference model. And I 
and then I try to extract to the label map. Let's save it. Choose the um, model that we are gonna extract the contours from. Choose the spacing between the sections, and uh, we are uh, going only uh, do this uh, for in one direction. And now I uh, am gonna show you the contour. We will have uh, the contour only in this. Uh, we can see it in uh, only in this. Uh, plane. And uh, we have uh, these contours every 20 section. Okay. In the next step, I will extract the surface using um, the A3D algorithm. However, there are lots of uh, variables that you can improve uh, the surface extraction results. I only want to show uh, what will be the difference and want it to be fast. Now you see the reconstructed surface. I will show the difference between the reconstructed uh, and uh, the reference surface here. This is the reconstructed and this is the different surface. We can also see the difference in each plane. You see uh, how jaggy uh, uh, we have. That's the um, reason that uh, the um, spacing between two, um, two D label maps is high. And as you see here, uh, we have lost uh, um, lots of uh, edges. Okay. Okay. What we uh, we uh, we did uh, was uh, to use the reference three D model to extract the two D label maps. Uh, these are the data sets that we will provide. Uh, and then uh, the 3D surface extraction methods will reconstruct the um, 3D model. In the next step, uh, we should you uh, we, should, we will validate the uh, accuracy and efficiency of the reconstructed methods by comparing the reference and the reconstructed surfaces. Uh, for the accuracy, I have used normal distance between the original uh, and reconstructed model, the volume and surface area, and for complexity, number of vertices, polygons, size of polygons, runtime, and other variables can be used. Here I show the results of comparison between uh, the reconstructed and uh, different surfaces that uh, I talked before about. Um, as you see, there are uh, uh, difference between um, uh, the areas and volume, and also we have uh, normal distance between these two. Uh, this is the same uh, procedure when uh, we use the anatomical reference models and uh, reconstruct uh, with any method. And here I show that uh, this method, uh, this benchmarking method can be used to compare between different surface extractions 
ex extraction algorithm as well as different variables of uh, one surface extraction algorithm. Uh, here I show uh, another anatomical reference model, and I have used 3D methods uh, to reconstruct these. Uh, and as you see, uh, one of the uh, methods uh, has given uh, the best results in uh, terms of accuracy. And uh, if uh, you want to have uh, to know more about the methods I have used uh, uh, to show the results, uh, the me method one uses every 20 section slides, uh, label maps, and uh, only resampled, uh, resampling was applied. Uh, and in method two, I have applied smoothing too. And method three, I have used, uh, um, I have increased the resolution in terms of um, uh, to the label maps and also uh, applied the resampling and smoothing. Uh, there are available converters uh, and our code will be available uh, as well as the data set uh, to be used by uh, other uh, groups. Thank you. Oops, so thank you very much, Mona. So as I was saying, this is this is more of an indication of new features to come uh, in H3D. And uh, for us, it's a way to develop in a direction that really will favor interoperability with other tools and uh, to maintain all those converters and make sure that we can connect everything together. Um, so that's pretty much it for uh, the core of the presentation i have there's there's a lot of material in the presentation that you can again look at uh, reminders and annotation description of the file format with some references um, uh, various guides information of how we do 3d surface reconstruction in the software but uh, feel free to ask questions now i'm really just going through the slides um, information of what our what we're doing in terms of uh, one micron slices, uh, example scripts to uh, go from your own high resolution histology uh, into the H3D format to go from uh, image stack to create overlays over your histology. Here you have in this slide the example of how to uh, interact. So, so here you have both uh, how to create SVG contours for web visualization from a mesh uh, and to absorb SVG contours in an A3D uh, overly uh, sparse voxel annotation format. Um, plenty of images of hidden features. Uh, and again, so those are the things I'm description, descri describing. So various information on the file format, uh, what's what in the XML file. Um, Etc. So, so have a look at it. I don't think there's a benefit for me scrolling through it too fast. So maybe I'll just stop talking and wait to see if we have any question in the next two minutes. I understand it's getting late in Germany, so I won't take it personal if there are none. A quick Windows yes. platform computers. Yes. Do you have in mind any solution to offer to those of us? us who do not use Windows. And by that, you don't mean Linux. I presume this is the Mac user question. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's te in, in theory, it's feasible. You have a slide with the dependencies. The, the, the graphical user interface is Qt, OpenSCN Graph. Those are all things that would uh, be compilable in a Mac. We, we've had a team member who was also uh, a Mac addict that had once at one point made it compile. There was a small problem. So it's possible somebody would have to put time on it. Um, and if there is a volunteer, he gets all the source code and, and our support. Uh, it, it's difficult. We're a very small team at NRC. That's why uh, we're trying to connect with people elsewhere to come and play in the code. Uh, so we cannot support many platforms now, like Windows plus one or two Linux is really as much as we can manage to keep it stable, but it's possible if, if the manpower is there. Yeah. 
Thank you for this answer. There's Zhao who mentions in the chat that uh, perhaps by installing a Windows VM that might work. Um, I'm not familiar with the performance of 3D drivers <laughs> on uh, and Windows VM. He right adds now. that was, that was a joke. Yes. <laughs> Those things there, are there, there, are, there, must there might be, be yes. uh, encapsulation yes. that works, but uh, I certainly won't tell you it does. Thank you. And we haven't tried. There is one thing I'd like to mention. Uh, so we have to install a software. Usually, um, you have a data server that is installed um, like inside organizations. So NRC has one, uh, McGill has one, and there is one in ULIC as well, but uh, they are not accessible from broad uh, access. So that's why um, it can also run locally. Big brain at 20 micron is not huge, so it's feasible, uh, not an avenue with the one micron data set that is terribly large. Uh, so either we could deploy um, broadly available um, servers, or there is now a, an interface with the, that can stream the data using the HTTP uh, protocol. And uh, but this is in development; it's not uh, ready to be deployed yet. But yes, in in the in in the development version of it, really the expectation we are connecting to uh, HBP backend instead of our own, and are expecting to use the eventually the the same data sources as the web applications. So I think we're at the end of our hour. So thank you very much for attending, and thank you to. Uh, all our three other presenters.